probably the only place in Indiana where you can go and see landscape scale native grassland. It's a preserve that's 8,400 acres in size. It's the largest planted prairie in the country. We've planted over 7,000 acres of, of prairie to date. It's also one of the most diverse. It's truly an impressive scale for a prairie restoration. We are standing on the Kanki Sands Preserve in Northwest Indiana, located in Newton County, right on uh, US 41. Kanki Sands is primarily located in, in what was the historic Beaver Lake. It was the largest lake in the state of Indiana. It was drained in the 1800s for agriculture. And right now, uh, we're standing on what's left of it. And you can see uh, one of the deepest parts of Beaver Lake behind me. Obviously, it's no longer a lake. It's high diversity prairie. And that's our south bison pasture, where the bison are currently. This really, floristically, is one of the most diverse places in Indiana. My particular history with the site goes back quite a ways. In the early 2000s, I did uh, plant surveys out here when I was in college as part of a research project. So my personal history with the site goes back uh, pushing 20 years. So I actually had the opportunity to see the site go from mostly cornfields to really nice, floristically diverse prairie, big enough to the point where we could do things like bring bison back to try and get those landscape scale impacts that you just can't see anywhere else in Indiana. The Nature Conservancy was able to purchase 7,200 acres in a single purchase in 1996. It's grown to about 8,400 acres, but we've planted over 7,000 acres of that to high diversity prairie planting. Uh, and so it's, it's a landscape that's changed from row crop agriculture to high diversity prairie restoration. Looking at today, a really wide assortment of uh, native grasses and wildflowers. The blue flower you see here is spiderwort. That's a really common native wildflower we have on our prairie that blooms this time of year. So what you're seeing really is very dynamic, fairly intact ecosystem that we've managed to put back together. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting processes going on. Everything from uh, you know the plants we put here thriving and growing, combined with our management, working to control invasive species. And we're having lots of interesting things happen. Lots of native uh, reptiles and insects uh, that are remnant dependent species have recolonized this area. And in the background, you can see the bison, which uh, have only been here for a couple of years. brought them back for prairie management. We didn't bring them back for uh, bison conservation. It was to conserve prairie. And so what do bison do? Uh, bison eat grasses and they make little bison. And so why is that important? It's important because these systems evolved with native grazers. And so there's, all, there's a whole host of plants and animals that need short grass. It's easy to plant a prairie and get six foot tall grasses. Uh, it's difficult to plant a prairie and get one foot grasses. And there's a there's a host of species that need that one, one foot tall grass, and bison create that on, on their own just by being bison. They're a great tool for land management. You think of bison as primarily grass grazers, and that's really true out west. And they do graze on grasses as well here, but things like the willows and the scouring rush are kind of uh, little surprises we didn't expect. And uh, as it turns out, they're a great benefit to us that we didn't expect we would get. In 2016, we brought in 23 animals. In 2017, we brought another 10 in direct from Wind Cave National Park. Uh, since then, the herd has, has grown to, we're sitting at over 70 animals today. The bison are thriving on site. The animal weights are, are, are certainly over average, uh, what you would normally see. Where these animals came from uh, in South Dakota, they got about 18 inches of rain. Here, we average about 38 inches of rain. Uh, additionally, they're a really high diversity prairie, so uh, there's probably over 600 species behind me right now in that prairie, and those bison have access to that. And so what that means is they're able to select uh, what they like to eat. I'm expecting to see 
quite a bit different results this year. We have some, we have noticed some uh, impacts in vegetation height, which we expected and which we desired. Interestingly, based on their grazing, uh, they do have uh, unusual preferences that we didn't expect. The, the, the bison are doing what bison do. The bison are, are, um, are doing a lot of the work for us. It's not only exciting to see the animals, but it's also exciting to see the effects that, that bison are having uh, on the prairie itself. Nobody really knows what a restored prairie looks like uh, because there isn't one. Uh, prairie is not a, a uh, uh, prairie restoration is not an end state. It's something that uh, has yet to be seen. We measure our success here based on a connectivity. And so what have we seen? We've seen uh, numerous plants and animals move across that landscape that was once fragmented and uh, is now uh, some of the, the, the prettiest prairie you'll, you'll ever see. I didn't really even know about prairies growing up and coming out here to do the plant surveys in college, I learned about prairie and how, what a really interesting system it was and how imperiled it was in Indiana. So just the fact that I'm able to come here and help bring back prairie on a landscape scale, uh, it's a really compelling reason to get up and come to work in the morning.